Welcome, seekers of the unseen and unexplained. Prepare yourself for a journey into the spectral realm of historical mystery as we delve into the sightings of Anne Boleyn's ghost. Our story begins with a woman who left her mark on history, not just in life, but also in death. Anne Boleyn, the second wife of King Henry VIII, is said to haunt several historic sites in England. These locations, steeped in history and tragedy, have become the stage for some of the most chilling, ghostly apparitions. One such location is the infamous Tower of London, where Anne met her untimely end. Sightings of her ghost here are numerous. Late at night, when the air is thick with the echoes of the past, she is seen wandering the corridors, her spectral form decapitated, carrying her head under her arm. But the tower is not the only place Anne is said to haunt. Hever Castle, Anne's childhood home, is another hotbed of paranormal activity. Here, her spirit is often seen during Christmas time, a season she loved during her life. Witnesses have reported seeing her, dressed in old-fashioned attire, gazing out of the windows or walking the gardens, lost in an eternal reverie. Interestingly, these sightings aren't random. They often coincide with significant dates in Anne's life. For instance, every year on May 19th, the anniversary of her execution, her ghost is said to return to the tower. These spectral sightings paint a vivid, albeit eerie, picture of a woman trapped in time, her spirit lingering in the places she once held dear. Yet they also raise a myriad of questions. Why does Anne's ghost continue to haunt these places? What is she trying to communicate? And most importantly, what does her restless spirit reveal about her life, her death, and the turbulent era she lived in? These sightings, chilling as they are, are just the beginning of the spectral tale of Anne Boleyn. As we continue this journey, we will delve deeper into the life and death of this intriguing historical figure and the ghostly sightings that have kept her memory alive for centuries. In order to truly understand the mystery that surrounds Anne Boleyn, we must travel back in time to her early life. Born into a family of nobility, Anne's upbringing was far from ordinary. She was sent to the Netherlands at a young age to receive an education befitting her noble status. Here at the court of Margaret of Austria, she was exposed to the intellectual currents of Renaissance humanism. She was tutored in various subjects, including literature, languages, music, and dance. These years were instrumental in shaping Anne into the charming and intellectual woman that would later catch the eye of King Henry VIII. However, her education didn't stop there. Anne was then sent to France, where she served as a maiden of honor to Queen Claude of France. Here, she was exposed to French fashion, art, and culture, all of which greatly influenced her. Anne's time in France polished her manners, enhanced her style, and added a touch of sophistication to her personality. This period of her life was highly influential, providing her with a wealth of knowledge and experience that undoubtedly set her apart from other women at the English court upon her return. Upon returning to England, Anne's cultured demeanor and sharp intellect quickly gained her recognition. She became a prominent figure at the English court, where her unique blend of charm, intellect, and sophistication made her a magnet for attention. But, as we will see, this attention was not always beneficial. As we delve deeper into the life and death of Anne Boleyn, we will see how her early upbringing and rise in the English court played a critical role in the events that would lead to her tragic end. But for now, let's continue to explore the spectral sightings of Anne Boleyn that have intrigued historians and paranormal enthusiasts alike for centuries. Transitioning from Anne's formative years, we now delve into the pivotal period of her life, her courtship and marriage to King Henry VIII. This chapter in her life not only changed her destiny, but set England on a new course. Her relationship with Henry VIII began when she caught his eye at the English court. Unlike other women who were easily swayed by the king's advances, Anne was different. She refused to become the king's mistress and insisted on marriage. This put Henry in a difficult position. His wife, Catherine of Aragon, had failed to provide him with a male heir, and Henry was desperate for a son. Anne represented the promise of a fresh start, but there was a problem. Divorce was not allowed by the Catholic Church. Henry sought an annulment from the Pope, but it was denied. Influenced by Anne, a staunch supporter of the Protestant Reformation, Henry took the drastic step of breaking away from the Catholic Church. Thus, the Church of England was born, with Henry as its head. This seismic shift in religious alignment not only allowed Henry to marry Anne, but also permanently altered the religious landscape of England. The king's marriage to Anne was controversial. 
Many did not accept her as their queen and her inability to bear a male heir only compounded the issue. However, she did give birth to a daughter, Elizabeth, who would later become one of England's most revered monarchs. Anne's influence on Henry was profound. She encouraged him to break away from the Catholic Church, leading to the establishment of the Church of England. This not only allowed Henry to marry the woman he loved, but also gave him supreme control over the church in England. This period in Anne's life was not only significant for her personal life, but also had far-reaching political implications. However, the happiness of their union was short-lived, and the subsequent events led to Anne's tragic end. As we continue with her life and death, we will delve deeper into these events and their impact on her spectral appearances. As we continue our exploration of Anne Boleyn's life, it's crucial to understand her role in the religious reforms that shook England to its core. Anne, unlike many of her contemporaries, was a staunch supporter of the Protestant Reformation. This was a time when the Catholic Church's authority was being questioned and new religious ideas were beginning to take root. Anne was a well-educated woman, fluent in French, and had spent part of her early life in the Netherlands, a hotbed of reformist ideas. She had access to banned Protestant texts and shared these ideas with Henry, subtly influencing his thoughts on religion. Anne's support for Protestant reformers was not just a personal belief. It played a significant role in reshaping England's religious policies. Historians often credit Anne's influence over Henry as a key factor in his decision to break from the Catholic Church. When the Pope refused to annul his marriage to Catherine of Aragon, Henry, under the sway of Anne's reformist beliefs, saw an opportunity. He declared himself the head of the Church of England, a move that was both radical and controversial. This break from the Catholic Church, known as the English Reformation, sent shockwaves throughout Europe. It was met with resistance from devout Catholics within England and abroad, leading to a period of religious upheaval and tension. Anne's position as Queen gave her the platform to promote Protestant ideals, further cementing the Church of England's foundation. Yet Anne's influence was a double-edged sword. Her support for Protestantism, coupled with her inability to give Henry a male heir, made her many enemies. These factors would eventually lead to her downfall. However, despite her tragic end, Anne's impact on England's religious landscape was indelible. Her support for the Reformation played a significant part in shaping the Church of England as we know it today. As we delve into the later years of Anne's life, we'll see how these religious tensions played a role in her downfall and possible spectral appearances. As we move forward in our exploration of Anne Boleyn's life, we reach a period of great turmoil and intrigue. Anne's inability to provide a male heir, coupled with her outspoken support for the Protestant Reformation, made her many enemies at court. These factors, among others, would eventually lead to her downfall. Anne's fall from grace was swift and brutal. She was arrested in May 1536 on charges of adultery, incest, and high treason. These accusations were most likely fabricated by her enemies who sought to remove her from power. The charges were based on testimonies, many of which were coerced or obtained through torture. The trial was a spectacle, with Anne defending herself eloquently against the outrageous accusations. Despite her efforts, the outcome was a foregone conclusion. The jury, composed of peers, including her own uncle, found her guilty. The sentence was death. Anne's execution was carried out within the walls of the Tower of London, the very place she had once called home. On the morning of May 19th, Anne was led to the scaffold. In her final moments, she maintained her dignity, giving a speech in which she declared her innocence and asked for the people to pray for King Henry. Her death marked a tragic end to a life marked by ambition, power, and controversy. But as we'll see in the following scenes, death was not the end for Anne Boleyn. Stories of her ghostly appearances began to circulate, suggesting that her spirit may still linger within the walls of the tower. As we delve into these ghostly sightings, we'll explore the possible connections between her dramatic life, tragic death, and the enduring legends of her spectral presence. Voice over. As we transition from the tangible aspects of Anne Boleyn's life and death, we now delve into the spectral realm where her spirit is said to remain. The legend of Anne Boleyn's ghost is as captivating as her life, with centuries of sightings and stories adding to the mystique. The origins of these ghostly tales are as old as the events themselves. Shortly after her execution, whispers of her spirit roaming the Tower of London began to circulate among the guards and inmates, 
The tales grew more potent with time, turning into a legend that continues to captivate us today. Sightings of Anne's ghost are most frequently reported at the Tower of London, particularly near the site of her execution. Eyewitnesses describe a spectral figure, often seen in a dress of pure white, wandering the tower's cold stone halls. Some accounts even depict her carrying her severed head, a chilling reminder of her tragic demise. The Tower of London is not the only location associated with Anne's spectral sightings. Hever Castle, her childhood home, is another reputed site. Visitors and staff have reported encountering her ghost, usually seen weeping in the gardens or gazing out of the windows. These sightings, combined with the dramatic circumstances of Anne's life and death, have given birth to a ghostly legend that refuses to fade. Theories to explain her spectral presence are numerous ranging from her seeking justice for her wrongful execution to her restless spirit unable to find peace. In the following scenes, we will delve deeper into these theories and explore more about Anne Boleyn's ghostly appearances, enriching our understanding of this enigmatic queen whose influence extends beyond her life and into the spectral realm. Voice over, as we delve deeper into the spectral realm of Anne Boleyn, we find ourselves drawn to the locations that are inextricably linked to her ghostly legend. Our journey begins at the Tower of London, a fortress steeped in history and bloodshed. This imposing stone edifice has stood witness to countless tales of power, betrayal, and execution, including that of Anne Boleyn. The Bloody Tower, where she spent her final days, is often associated with her spectral sightings. Eyewitnesses report seeing her ghostly figure wandering the tower's cold stone halls, particularly near the site of her execution. The tower's architectural features, such as its narrow corridors and dimly lit rooms, only add to the eerie atmosphere. From the Tower of London, we travel to Hever Castle, Anne's childhood home in Kent. This charming castle, surrounded by lush gardens and tranquil moats, is starkly different from the tower. Yet, it is here that visitors and staff have reported numerous encounters with Anne's ghost. She's often seen in the gardens, weeping under a willow tree, or gazing out of the windows, as if yearning for a life she once had. The castle's antiquated architecture, with its dark wooden interiors and flickering fireplaces, provides a fitting backdrop for these spectral sightings. These haunted grounds, filled with centuries of history and mystery, serve as the stage for the ghostly legend of Anne Boleyn. As we wander through the Tower of London and Hever Castle, we can't help but feel a chill run down our spine, a sense of unease, as if someone from the past is still lingering, still watching. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into the theories behind Anne Boleyn's ghostly appearances in the next scene. Voice over. As we traverse the haunting tale of Anne Boleyn, it's impossible to ignore her profound cultural impact and enduring legacy. Over the centuries, this controversial queen has been immortalized in literature, art, and popular culture, serving as a symbol of both female empowerment and tragic romance. Her story has inspired countless authors, artists, and playwrights, from the classic works of William Shakespeare to the contemporary novels of Philippa Gregory. In Shakespeare's play, Henry VIII, Anne is portrayed as a virtuous and innocent victim, while in Gregory's The Other Boleyn Girl, she emerges as a more complex and ambitious character. Anne's influence extends beyond the written word, permeating the realm of visual arts. Her portraits, often depicted with the iconic bee necklace and a hint of a knowing smile, have become the enduring image of a queen who dared to defy convention. Her life, filled with ambition, love, and ultimate tragedy, has been dramatized in numerous films and television series. From the 1933 film, The Private Life of Henry VIII, to the more recent series, The Tudors. Anne's character has been portrayed in a myriad of ways, reflecting societal attitudes towards powerful women. In the realm of popular culture, Anne's ghostly legend has been a source of fascination and intrigue. Her spectral sightings at the Tower of London and Hever Castle have inspired countless ghost tours and paranormal investigations, further fueling her enduring legend. But perhaps the most significant aspect of Anne's legacy is her role as a symbol of female empowerment. In an era dominated by male authority, Anne's rise to the throne was nothing short of revolutionary. She dared to challenge the societal norms of her time, using her wit and charm to navigate the treacherous waters of the English court. Even in death, Anne continues to inspire. Her tragic end, rather than diminishing her legacy, has only served to enhance it. 
casting her as a tragic heroine in a tale of love, power, and betrayal. As we continue our exploration of Anne Boleyn's ghostly legend, it's important to remember the woman behind the ghost. A woman of ambition, intelligence, and courage. A woman whose legacy continues to resonate centuries after her tragic end. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into the life and death of Anne Boleyn in the next scene. Voiceover. As we bridge the gap between Anne Boleyn's enduring legacy and her life and death, let's take a moment to delve into the rich tapestry of her portrayals in media. Film and television adaptations have played a significant role in shaping the public perception of Anne Boleyn's story. From the silver screen to the small screen, Anne's life has been depicted in various ways, each adding a new dimension to her complex character. In the 1969 film, Anne of the Thousand Days, Anne is portrayed as a strong, cunning woman who uses her intelligence to navigate through the treacherous waters of the royal court, a far cry from the innocent victim often depicted in literature. The film explores the tumultuous relationship between Anne and King Henry VIII, giving us a glimpse into the power dynamics at play in their marriage. Fast forward to the 21st century, and we find Natalie Dormer's portrayal of Anne in the critically acclaimed series The Tudors. Here, Anne is projected as a woman of ambition and courage who dares to challenge the norms of her time. This portrayal resonates with modern audiences who view her as a symbol of female empowerment. Interestingly, these adaptations also delve into Anne's ghostly legend. The 2003 BBC miniseries Ghost Stories for Christmas features an episode titled The Stalls of Barchester, in which Anne's ghost is a central character. The chilling portrayal of her spectral figure, often seen roaming the halls of the Tower of London, has only added to the fascination and intrigue surrounding her ghostly legend. These modern interpretations have played a crucial role in shaping the public perception of Anne Boleyn. They provide us with a nuanced understanding of her life, her ambitions, her downfall, and her enduring legacy. They allow us to view Anne not just as a historical figure, but as a woman who dared to defy convention, a woman whose story continues to captivate us centuries after her tragic end. As we move forward, we will delve deeper into the life and death of Anne Boleyn, shedding light on the woman behind the ghost. Stay tuned as the tale of this controversial queen continues to unfold. Voiceover. As we continue our exploration of Anne Boleyn's life and legacy, it's crucial to understand her profound impact on feminist discourse. Over time, Anne has come to be seen as a symbol of female empowerment, a woman who defied societal norms and dared to carve her own path in a male-dominated world. This perspective, however, is not without its complexities. In the 16th century, the role of women, especially those in positions of power, was tightly constrained. Yet, Anne Boleyn managed to exert considerable influence over King Henry VIII, and by extension, the course of English history. She was an educated woman who used her intellect and charm to navigate the treacherous waters of the royal court. Her refusal to become the king's mistress, insisting instead on marriage, was a bold move that challenged the established order. However, the feminist iconography surrounding Anne Boleyn is not without its controversies. Critics argue that her portrayal as a feminist icon tends to romanticize her life and overlooks the harsh realities she faced. Anne was, after all, a woman living in a time when her value was largely determined by her ability to produce a male heir. Her failure to do so ultimately led to her downfall. Voiceover. Ghost stories like that of Anne Boleyn have captivated our collective imagination for centuries. But why are we so drawn to these chilling tales? Let's delve into the psychological allure of ghost stories. For many, these spectral narratives provide a means of exploring our deepest fears and anxieties in a safe and controlled environment. They allow us to confront the unknown, the taboo, and the terrifying, all from the comfort of our own homes. Ghost stories also serve as a form of social bonding, a shared experience that brings us closer together even as it sends shivers down our spines. Now, let's turn to the enduring fascination with Anne Boleyn's ghost. As with many ghost stories, the tragedy and trauma of Anne's life and death play a significant role. The collective memory of her tragic end the cruel accusations and her final moments on the scaffold has imprinted on our cultural consciousness. Her ghostly presence in the Tower of London and Hever Castle is a haunting reminder of her dramatic life and untimely demise. Moreover, Anne Boleyn's spectral presence serves as a potent symbol of her enduring influence. Even in death, she continues to exert a powerful pull on our imaginations. 
Her ghostly sightings, whether real or imagined, have kept her story alive, allowing us to explore and reevaluate her life and legacy. In the end, the psychological allure of ghost stories and the cultural fascination with Anne Boleyn's ghostly presence speak to our human desire to understand the past, confront our fears, and make sense of the world around us. In the next scene, we will return to the tangible realm and explore the life and death of Anne Boleyn in greater detail. Voice over. To fully appreciate Anne Boleyn's story, we need to delve deeper into the historical context of Tudor England under King Henry VIII's rule. The early 16th century was a period of significant political, religious, and social change in England. At the heart of these developments was the English Reformation, a movement that dramatically reshaped the religious landscape of the country. King Henry VIII, once a staunch supporter of the Catholic Church, found himself at odds with the Pope when he sought to annul his marriage to Catherine of Aragon. His desire to marry Anne Boleyn and his desperation for a male heir led him to break with Rome and establish the Church of England. This monumental shift had far-reaching consequences, affecting every aspect of English life. The Reformation brought about an era of religious upheaval and political power struggles. It also led to the dissolution of the monasteries, a move that redistributed vast amounts of wealth and land, altering the social fabric of England. Amidst these dramatic changes, Anne Boleyn ascended to the throne as queen consort. Anne's time as queen was fraught with challenges. She was an outsider, seen by many as the other woman, who had usurped Catherine's rightful place. Her unconventional rise to power and her reformist religious views made her a target for her critics. She was also under immense pressure to deliver a male heir, a task that proved to be her undoing. Anne's inability to provide a son was seen as a failure and it made her vulnerable to her enemies at court. False accusations of adultery, incest, and treason were leveled against her, leading to her arrest and execution. These events marked a tragic end to Anne's life. But as we know, her story didn't end there. As we move forward, keep in mind the tumultuous times in which Anne lived. The political, religious, and social changes of Tudor England shaped her life, her reign as queen, and ultimately, her tragic end. Now let's return to Anne's life and death and explore how these historical events might have contributed to the enduring legend of her ghostly presence. Voice over. In the midst of political and religious turmoil, another fascinating aspect of Anne Boleyn's life often goes unnoticed, her significant influence on cultural patronage. Anne was a woman of considerable intellect and taste, and during her time as queen, she played a crucial role in promoting the arts, literature, and music at the Tudor court. Anne's education in the Netherlands and France exposed her to the vibrant intellectual and artistic movements of the Renaissance. She brought back with her a love for the arts and a desire to foster similar cultural growth in England. As queen, Anne used her position to support and patronize artists, writers, and musicians, effectively turning the court into a cultural hub. Among her protégés were renowned figures like the composer Thomas Tallis and the poet Thomas Wyatt, whose works were greatly influenced by Anne's patronage. Anne also played a pivotal role in the spread of the printed word. She was an avid reader herself and was known to have an extensive library that included works by significant authors of the time. Anne's support for the new technology of the printing press helped to popularize books and literacy in England. Perhaps one of the most significant aspects of Anne's cultural influence was her support for the English language. At a time when Latin and French were the languages of the court and the church, Anne advocated for the use of English. She championed the translation of religious texts into English, a move that was not only a part of the larger Reformation agenda, but also a significant step towards establishing English as a language of prestige and power. Her passion for culture and the arts and her support for English left an indelible mark on Tudor England. It's important to remember that Anne Boleyn was not just a queen caught in a web of political and religious upheaval. She was also a cultural visionary, a woman whose influence extended beyond politics and religion to shape the very fabric of English culture. As we move forward to explore the life and death of Anne Boleyn, let's keep in mind the multifaceted woman she was, a woman of power, intellect, and cultural sophistication whose influence still resonates in the corridors of English history. Voice over. As we delve deeper into the life of Anne Boleyn, 
it is impossible to overlook the intricate web of court politics and rivalries that shaped her destiny. Power struggles and political maneuvers were common within the Tudor court, and Anne found herself at the center of it all. Two figures in particular played a crucial role in Anne's downfall, Thomas Cromwell and Cardinal Thomas Wolsey. Let's start with Wolsey, King Henry VIII's chief advisor. When the king sought to annul his marriage to Catherine of Aragon to marry Anne, Wolsey was tasked with securing the Pope's approval. But when Wolsey failed to deliver, he fell out of favor with the king. Anne, who was never a fan of Wolsey, seized this opportunity to sideline him further, ultimately leading to his downfall. Then, there was Thomas Cromwell, Wolsey's former assistant, who rose to prominence after his master's disgrace. Cromwell was a master manipulator and skilled politician. He saw Anne as a threat to his power and influence, and he was not wrong. Anne's religious views and political alliances were often at odds with Cromwell's. Their rivalry reached its peak when Anne opposed Cromwell's plan to dissolve the monasteries and use their wealth to fill the king's coffers. This disagreement was the beginning of the end for Anne. Cromwell, seizing the opportunity, orchestrated a plot against Anne. He fabricated charges of adultery, incest, and treason against her, painting a picture of Anne as a manipulative and unfaithful queen. The king, already frustrated with Anne's inability to produce a male heir, believed these charges. This led to Anne's arrest, trial, and eventual execution. The court intrigues and power plays of the Tudor era were a deadly game, and Anne Boleyn found herself outmaneuvered and outplayed. As we continue to explore her life and death, remember that Anne was not just a victim of her circumstances. She was a player in the game of power, a woman who dared to challenge the status quo and paid the ultimate price. Voice over. Anne Boleyn's execution sent shockwaves through the Tudor court and the entire realm of England. This event was not just a personal tragedy, but a political and social cataclysm that would forever alter the course of English history. Henry VIII's decision to execute his queen was unprecedented, and the repercussions were far-reaching. Let's delve into the immediate aftermath of Anne's death. Firstly, Anne's execution paved the way for Henry's third marriage to Jane Seymour just days after Anne's beheading, signaling the king's desperate desire for a male heir. However, it also marked a significant shift in Henry's attitude towards his wives. Once a romantic and passionate man, he became increasingly tyrannical. His subsequent marriages marked by a pattern of disillusionment and, in some cases, cruelty. Secondly, Anne's death had a profound impact on the public perception of Henry. The people of England, already resentful of the religious upheaval caused by the king's desire to marry Anne, were horrified by her execution. Henry's reputation suffered greatly and he was seen by many as a merciless tyrant. His rule was further tainted by the subsequent executions of his other wives, cementing his legacy as a ruthless and unpredictable monarch. Finally, Anne's execution had significant implications for the Tudor dynasty. Her daughter Elizabeth was declared illegitimate, just as her half-sister Mary had been. This left Henry's only legitimate child as Edward, his son by Jane Seymour. The throne succession was in constant flux, leading to political instability and power struggles that would continue long after Henry's death. In conclusion, the impact of Anne Boleyn's execution on Henry VIII's reign, his subsequent marriages and the Tudor dynasty was profound. Her downfall marked a turning point in English history, altering public perceptions and setting the stage for a tumultuous era of political and religious change. Anne's life was a catalyst for revolution and her death a testament to the dangerous game of power and ambition in the Tudor court. Voice over. To fully comprehend the life, trial, and execution of Anne Boleyn, we must delve into the historical documents and archival records of the time. These primary sources serve as our main portal into the Tudor period, offering us a glimpse into the world that Anne inhabited. Let's begin with the correspondence between Anne and Henry VIII. These letters, preserved in the Vatican archives, reveal the passionate and tumultuous relationship between the two. Henry's love letters to Anne are filled with declarations of his undying love, illustrating the depth of his feelings for her. Then, we have the records of Anne's trial. These documents, held at the National Archives in Kew, detail the accusations made against Anne, her defense, and the final verdict. The charges, which included adultery, incest, and treason, led to her execution. However, the veracity of these charges has been a topic of contention among historians, suggesting that they may have been fabricated to remove Anne from power. 
The third significant document is the execution order signed by Henry VIII. This chilling piece of history, now housed in the British Library, is a stark reminder of Anne's tragic end. And finally, there are the numerous contemporary accounts and chronicles that narrate the events of Anne's life and death. These documents, while not always entirely reliable due to the biases of their authors, nonetheless provide valuable insights into how Anne and her downfall were perceived by her contemporaries. Navigating these historical documents is not without its challenges. The language and handwriting of the 16th century can be difficult to decipher, and the bias and perspectives of the writers must be taken into consideration. However, these records are indispensable in piecing together the enigma that is Anne Boleyn. By studying these primary sources, we can better understand the circumstances surrounding Anne's life, her trial, and her execution. They allow us to delve deeper into her story, offering a more nuanced understanding of this fascinating and tragic figure. So, as we continue to explore the ghostly legend of Anne Boleyn, let us not forget the historical records that paint the picture of her mortal life. A voiceover. Anne Boleyn wasn't just a queen consort, she was a diplomatic force in her own right. Let's take a moment to shift our focus from the scandal and tragedy of Anne's life and death, and instead delve into her lesser-known role as a diplomat during her time as queen. Anne's education in the Netherlands and France provided her with a unique perspective on international relations. She was fluent in French and used this to her advantage in diplomatic correspondence and negotiations. Anne's influence on English diplomacy was particularly evident in the country's relations with France. She facilitated negotiations between King Henry VIII and the French King Francis I, working tirelessly to secure an alliance that would strengthen England's position in Europe. Anne also played a crucial role in the advancement of the Protestant Reformation. Her religious convictions and support for reformist ideas significantly impacted the religious and political landscape of England. Anne used her influence to appoint reform-minded clergy and to encourage the translation of the Bible into English, a revolutionary act that expanded the reach of Protestant ideas. Moreover, Anne's diplomatic efforts extended beyond the European continent. She was instrumental in establishing England's relationship with the Ottoman Empire, a connection that would have significant implications for trade and international relations in the years to come. In these ways and more, Anne Boleyn used her position as queen to shape the trajectory of England's foreign policy. Her impact on international relations is often overshadowed by the dramatic events of her personal life, but her diplomatic efforts were a testament to her intelligence and political savvy. As we delve deeper into the life of Anne Boleyn, let's not forget the profound influence she had on the world stage. It's a facet of her legacy that deserves recognition and admiration. Next, we will return to the narrative of her life and death, and how these events might have contributed to the ghostly legend that surrounds her. Stay tuned as we continue to unravel the complex and intriguing story of Anne Boleyn. Voice over. Now, let's dissect another crucial facet of Anne Boleyn's life, her impact on women's rights in the patriarchal society of Tudor England. Despite the societal norms of the 16th century, Anne Boleyn was a visionary, paving the way for women's education and empowerment. Born into an era where women were expected to be submissive, Anne defied these expectations, embodying a spirit of independence and assertiveness. She was a highly educated woman, a rarity in those times, and she used her knowledge and wit to navigate the complex and male-dominated world of politics and religion. Anne's influence extended to her advocacy for women's education. She believed that women should have the same access to education as men, a radical idea in a society that viewed women as inferior. Anne was known to have sponsored scholarships for young women, and she used her position as queen to promote female literacy. She was also instrumental in the translation and distribution of the Bible in English, making it accessible to a wider audience, including women. But perhaps the most significant aspect of Anne's legacy was her challenge to the traditional gender roles of her time. She was vocal in her opinions, unafraid to express her thoughts, even when they contradicted those of her husband, King Henry VIII. This was unprecedented, especially for a queen consort, and it set a precedent for women to assert their thoughts and ideas. Anne Boleyn might have lived centuries ago, but her legacy as a trailblazer for women's rights endures. She dared to challenge the status quo, to fight for her rights and to advocate for the rights of other women. Anne Boleyn, in her own way, was a feminist icon, a beacon of hope and resilience for women in a time when their voices were often 
silenced. As we continue to explore her life and death, we must remember that her influence extended far beyond the walls of the royal court. Anne Boleyn's spirit perhaps continues to inspire and empower women, just as her life did. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into the life and death of Anne Boleyn in the next scene. Voice over. As we transition from the life of Anne Boleyn to her afterlife, it's essential to delve into the local folklore and legends that surround this enigmatic figure. Across England, tales of her spectral presence have been passed down through generations, each one adding a new layer to the mystery of Anne Boleyn. From the Tower of London to her childhood home at Hever Castle, Anne's ghost is said to wander, a restless spirit trapped between the earthly realm and the afterlife. We've reached out to local historians and storytellers, each one eager to share their unique tales and interpretations of Anne's ghostly legend. In Norfolk, there's a tale of Anne appearing each Christmas Eve at Blickling Hall, her birthplace. Here, locals speak of a carriage pulled by headless horses and driven by a headless coachman. Inside the carriage sits Anne, also headless, dressed in a flowing white gown. In Kent, at Hever Castle, Anne is said to appear each Christmas day, seen gazing out of the window of her old bedroom, a melancholy look on her face. And of course, at the Tower of London, countless visitors have reported sightings of Anne, often near the site of her execution. Some say she appears as a full-bodied apparition. Others claim to see her carrying her severed head. These are but a few examples of the rich tapestry of folklore that surrounds Anne Boleyn. These stories, these legends, they keep her memory alive, transforming her from historical figure to spectral presence. But what can they tell us about Anne Boleyn, the woman, the queen, the ghost? As we continue to explore her life and death and her enduring legacy, we must consider these tales not just as ghost stories, but as part of the complex narrative that is Anne Boleyn. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into the life and death of Anne Boleyn in the next scene voiceover. As we traverse the timeline of Anne Boleyn's life, death, and spectral legacy, it's crucial to acknowledge how modern perceptions and historical revisions have shaped our understanding of this enigmatic figure. Over the centuries, Anne's portrayal has evolved dramatically, from a controversial queen and supposed adulteress to a feminist icon and a victim of a tyrannical king. Today's historians and cultural commentators continually reassess her life and legacy, offering new insights into her character and influence. In recent years, Anne has been celebrated for her intelligence, political acumen, and her role in instigating religious reform. Yet she remains a divisive figure, with some still viewing her as a homewrecker who seduced a king for her own gain. This contrast underscores the complexity of her character and the continuing debate around her actions and motivations. In the light of new research and discoveries, the narrative of Anne's life has been further complicated. For instance, the discovery of love letters from King Henry to Anne, stored in the Vatican archives, helped to dispel the notion of Anne as a mere seductress, and instead highlighted a passionate, complex relationship. Furthermore, the revisionist approach to Anne's trial and execution has led to a broader consensus that she was framed, a victim of political machinations rather than a guilty queen. This shift in narrative has humanized Anne, transforming her from a figure of scandal to one of tragedy and injustice. As we look back at Anne Boleyn's life through the lens of modern interpretations and historical revisions, it's clear that her legacy is continually evolving. Each new discovery, each revision of history, adds another layer to the complex tapestry that is Anne Boleyn's life and afterlife. As we move forward, one can't help but wonder what new insights and revelations await us in the ongoing exploration of Anne Boleyn's fascinating story. In the next scene, we will delve into the life and death of Anne Boleyn, exploring the pivotal moments that defined her earthly existence and set the stage for her spectral presence. Voice over. As we delve deeper into the life, death, and spectral existence of Anne Boleyn, it's crucial to pause and reflect on the ethical considerations we, as storytellers, must bear in mind. The portrayal of historical figures like Anne Boleyn carries with it a significant responsibility. We're not merely reciting facts and anecdotes, but shaping the way these figures are remembered and understood by generations to come. Balancing entertainment value with historical accuracy is a delicate act. Historical figures often become characters in our narratives, and there's a temptation to dramatize their lives for the sake of compelling storytelling. Yet we must tread carefully, 
sensationalizing their experiences or misrepresenting their actions can perpetuate harmful stereotypes and misconceptions. Anne Boleyn, for instance, has often been depicted as a scheming seductress, an image that oversimplifies her complex character and diminishes her significant political and cultural influence. Moreover, the ethical responsibility extends to how we handle the documented evidence. The interpretation of historical documents, letters and testimonies can significantly sway the narrative. Therefore, it's essential to approach these sources with a critical eye, questioning their biases and considering the context in which they were produced. Filmmakers and historians also have a duty to acknowledge the gaps and uncertainties in our historical knowledge. In the case of Anne Boleyn, many aspects of her life, including the precise reasons for her downfall, remain shrouded in mystery. It's crucial to communicate these uncertainties rather than filling the gaps with speculative fiction. In conclusion, portraying historical figures like Anne Boleyn is a task that requires careful consideration and a commitment to integrity. As we continue to explore her life and ghostly afterlife, we must strive to do justice to her complex character and the turbulent times in which she lived. Yeah, it's over. In the realm of art, literature, and history, symbolism and iconography often serve as powerful tools to convey complex ideas and narratives. Anne Boleyn, with her storied life and tragic end, is no exception. One of the most recognized symbols associated with Anne is her iconic bee necklace a piece of jewelry that has often been used in portraits and other depictions to immediately identify her. This B for Boleyn was more than just an initial. It was a symbol of her identity, her ambition, and her unprecedented rise from a lady-in-waiting to the Queen of England. Another recurring symbol is the White Falcon, which was Anne's heraldic emblem. The Falcon, a bird of prey known for its power and keen vision, represented Anne's determination and her sharp intellect. It was also a symbol of her status as queen and her role in the religious reformation of England. But perhaps the most enduring symbol associated with Anne is her own image, which has been used and reinterpreted countless times in art, literature, and popular culture. Anne Boleyn, with her dark eyes and signature bee necklace, has become an icon of resistance, ambition, and tragic romance. Her image has been used to represent the struggles of women in patriarchal societies, their ambition in the face of adversity, and the tragic consequences of challenging societal norms. In many ways, Anne's image serves as a canvas onto which we project our own ideas about power, gender, and resistance. She has been portrayed as a femme fatale, a romantic heroine, a feminist icon, and a victim of political machinations. Each representation, while differing in interpretation, underscores the enduring fascination with Anne Boleyn and the multifaceted nature of her legacy. As we continue to explore the life and afterlife of Anne Boleyn, it's crucial to remember that behind the symbols and the iconography is a complex woman who defied the conventions of her time and left an indelible mark on history. Voice over. Anne Boleyn's life and death have been subjects of endless fascination and debate among historians, scholars, and enthusiasts alike. The complex narrative of her rise to power, her influence on religious reform, and her tragic end has resulted in various interpretations of her motivations, character, and legacy. Some view Anne as a scheming seductress who manipulated her way to the throne, while others see her as a victim of political machinations beyond her control. Yet another perspective paints her as an ambitious woman who sought power and influence in a male-dominated world. Modern scholarship continues to reevaluate and reinterpret Anne's story. Historians now have access to a wealth of archival material, letters, court records, personal accounts that provide a more nuanced understanding of Anne Boleyn. For instance, the charges of adultery, incest, and treason that led to her execution are now widely believed to have been fabricated, a ploy to rid Henry VIII of a wife who could not produce a male heir. Anne's role in the English Reformation, too, is a subject of ongoing debate. Some argue that she was a key driver of religious reform, while others suggest that she was merely a pawn in a larger political game. Similarly, her legacy as a feminist icon is contested. Was she a trailblazer for women's rights, or is this a modern interpretation projected onto a historical figure? The truth likely lies somewhere in the middle, a blend of all these perspectives. Anne Boleyn was a woman of her time, navigating the treacherous waters of the Tudor court. But she was also a woman ahead of her time, pushing boundaries and challenging societal norms. As we continue to uncover new evidence and gain fresh perspectives, 
the image of Anne Boleyn becomes ever more complex and intriguing. It is this ongoing quest for understanding that keeps the memory of Anne Boleyn alive and her story relevant, centuries after her death. But voiceover. Anne Boleyn's influence was not confined to the English court. She was a woman of the world, a vital player in the complex web of international politics during her time. Anne's early years were spent in the Netherlands and France, where she served as a lady-in-waiting to the Archduchess Margaret of Austria and Queen Claude of France. These experiences exposed her to European court culture and politics, shaping her worldview and diplomatic skills, which would later come into play during her reign as Queen of England. Anne's connections to France were particularly significant. Her fluency in French, her knowledge of French customs, and her relationships with key French courtiers, including the influential poet and diplomat Thomas Wyatt, positioned her as a valuable asset in King Henry's diplomatic endeavors with France. Some historians even suggest that Anne may have played a role in negotiating the Treaty of the Moor in 1525, which sought to establish peace between England and France. Anne's relationship with Emperor Charles V of the Holy Roman Empire was more contentious. Charles was a nephew of Catherine of Aragon, Henry's first wife, and he strongly opposed the annulment of their marriage. Anne's ascendancy to the throne strained relations between England and the empire, leading to a diplomatic fallout that would have long-lasting repercussions. But Anne was not one to back down. She was known for her strong opinions and her willingness to express them, even when they contradicted the kings. She famously clashed with Thomas Cromwell, Henry's chief minister, over the distribution of church wealth following the dissolution of the monasteries. Anne's influence on international relations was substantial, but it was also controversial. Her role in the English Reformation and her contentious relationships with European powers shaped England's diplomatic landscape in ways that continue to be debated by historians. Whether loved or loathed, Anne Boleyn was a force to be reckoned with, a woman whose impact extended far beyond the confines of the English court. Voice over. In the midst of political and religious turmoil, Anne Boleyn also played a significant role in the cultural and artistic enrichment of England. Music, in particular, was an arena where her influence was profoundly felt. As queen, Anne was a key patron of musicians and composers, using her position to foster a vibrant musical culture at the Tudor court. Anne's early exposure to the continental Europe, particularly her time in the French court, introduced her to a variety of musical styles. She developed a keen appreciation for music and was known to be an accomplished lute player. This love for music didn't just stop at her personal enjoyment, as queen, she actively supported the arts, inviting musicians from across Europe to perform at the English court. This cultural exchange had a profound influence on the evolution of English music, introducing new styles and techniques that would shape the future of music in England. One of the composers she patronized was William Cornish, a prominent figure in early Tudor music. His works, some of which were performed at court, were known for their complexity and emotional depth reflecting the cultural sophistication that Anne encouraged as queen. Anne also played a role in the propagation of courtly love songs, a popular genre during the Tudor era. These songs, often laden with romantic and chivalric themes, were a reflection of the courtly culture that Anne was a part of. Some historians even suggest that certain songs were written specifically for her, a testament to her influence and patronage. As we delve deeper into the life and legacy of Anne Boleyn, it is important to remember her not just as a queen mired in controversy, but as a patron of the arts, a woman whose love for music helped shape the cultural landscape of England. Her influence, far from being confined to the political and religious spheres, extended into the realm of culture and art, leaving an indelible mark on the music of Tudor England. Voice over. Anne Boleyn's influence extended far beyond the realm of music. In fact, her impact on the cultural and intellectual climate of the Tudor court was quite significant. As a prominent figure at court, Anne was instrumental in promoting humanist ideas. She was an avid reader and had a personal library stocked with works by leading humanist thinkers of the time. Her interest in these ideas had a profound effect on the intellectual atmosphere at court. Through her patronage and advocacy, humanist thought flourished, influencing the cultural and political landscape of Tudor England. Anne was also a trendsetter in terms of fashion. She brought back styles from her time in the French court, which were considered quite avant-garde in England. Her dresses, adorned with French hoods and extravagant sleeves, set new trends and defined the fashion of the Tudor court. 
Her style was emulated by many, leading to a shift in English fashion towards more continental styles. Furthermore, Anne's influence was felt in courtly entertainment. She was known to host elaborate banquets and masquerades, introducing new forms of entertainment that were unheard of at the English court. She invited performers from across Europe, enriching the court with a variety of cultural experiences. Anne's impact on Tudor court culture was therefore multifaceted. She was a woman of intellect, a trendsetter, and a patron of the arts. Through her influence, she helped shape the cultural and intellectual climate of the Tudor court, leaving a lasting legacy that would endure long after her tragic end. As we continue to explore the life and death of Anne Boleyn, it's clear that her influence was not just political or religious, but cultural as well, leaving an indelible mark on the history of Tudor England. Voice over. To truly understand Anne Boleyn, we must peel back the layers of her life to examine her personal relationships, particularly those with her family members. Born into the ambitious Boleyn family, Anne's life was deeply influenced by her family's political aspirations. Her father, Thomas Boleyn, was a well-connected diplomat and courtier who recognized the potential of his children as political assets. He was instrumental in arranging Anne's early education at the courts of the Netherlands and France, thereby shaping her intellectual development and cosmopolitan outlook. Anne's relationship with her siblings was complex. Her sister Mary was a former mistress of King Henry VIII, a fact that might have shaped Anne's own relationship with the king. Historians speculate that Anne learned from her sister's experiences, choosing to withhold her favors from the king and thus securing a marriage proposal instead of becoming a mere mistress. Her brother, George Boleyn, was a close confidant and ally in the treacherous world of the Tudor court. Their close relationship, however, would later be twisted into accusations of incest during Anne's downfall. This was a devastating blow, as it led not only to Anne's execution, but also George's. Anne's relationships were not just a product of her family's ambitions, but also of her own. She leveraged her connections and her education to rise to the highest position in the land, only to be brought down by the same machinations that had lifted her up. These relationships, both familial and otherwise, played a significant role in shaping Anne's life and ultimately her tragic end. In the next scene, we will delve into the life and death of Anne Boleyn. As we do, let's keep in mind the complex web of relationships that influenced her decisions, her rise to power and her eventual downfall. Voice over. In the wake of her tragic end, Anne Boleyn's story has lived on, rippling throughout the ages. Her life, death, and supposed spectral existence have deeply ingrained themselves into our cultural heritage, becoming a point of endless fascination. Anne Boleyn's public memory has taken many forms over the centuries, from memorials and monuments to annual events, each one a testament to her enduring influence. The Tower of London, the site of her execution, has become a place of pilgrimage for many. A memorial plaque marks the spot where she was beheaded, a stark reminder of her fate. Every year, on the anniversary of her execution, a procession of mourners dressed in Tudor costume pay their respects, their somber parade a moving tribute to a queen who met an untimely end. In her childhood home, Hever Castle, a statue of Anne stands tall, her gaze defiant, a symbol of her resilience. Annual events like the Anne Boleyn Festival at Hever Castle draw crowds from all around the world each person eager to learn more about this enigmatic queen. Public interest in Anne Boleyn's story remains high, her life and death a source of endless fascination. She has been immortalized in literature, film, and television, each portrayal adding to the collective memory of her life. But perhaps the most poignant commemoration of Anne is the enduring belief in her ghostly presence. Her spectral sightings, whether real or imagined, have kept her story alive, making her an enduring part of our cultural heritage. In the next scene, we will delve deeper into the life and death of Anne Boleyn, keeping in mind the ways in which her memory has been preserved and commemorated throughout history. Voice over. As we delve into the spectral sightings of Anne Boleyn, it's important to understand the context of the times in which she lived and died. The Tudor period was a time of profound belief in the supernatural and the afterlife. Ghost stories were not just tales told around the fire. They were seen as very real warnings from the spirit world. Ghosts were often considered to be souls in purgatory, seeking justice, or a chance to complete unfinished business. In the case of Anne Boleyn, her abrupt and tragic end, coupled with the controversy that surrounded her life, makes her a prime candidate for such a haunting. Her alleged spectral appearances could be seen as a quest for justice, 
a proclamation of her innocence, or a manifestation of the collective guilt over her unjust execution. The belief in Anne Boleyn's ghost also touches on broader themes of mortality and historical trauma. Her spectral sightings remind us of the fragility of life and the irreversible consequences of our actions. They also serve as a stark reminder of the injustices done to her, echoing the pain and trauma of her untimely death. In the next scene, we will delve back into the life and death of Anne Boleyn. As we do so, keep in mind the cultural significance of her alleged haunting and consider how this reflects the beliefs and values of the Tudor era. Voice over. In the quest to understand Anne Boleyn and her spectral legacy, we have to dig deep into the archives and the groundbreaking work of digital humanities. The world of historical research has been revolutionized by new technologies and methodologies, uncovering fascinating insights about Anne's life. Recent archival discoveries have thrown new light on Anne's character and her role in court. For instance, letters believed to have been written by her reveal a woman of intelligence, charm, and political acumen. Digital humanities, the intersection of computing and the disciplines of the humanities, is transforming the way we study history. The Tudor era, much like other periods, is being re-examined through the lens of digital research. Through data visualization, mapping projects, and digital reconstructions, we can now explore Tudor England and Anne Boleyn's life in ways previously unimaginable. One such project is the Virtual Anne Boleyn Initiative. Using 3D modeling and virtual reality, researchers have reconstructed the Tower of London as it would have looked in Anne's time, providing an immersive experience of her final days. These digital projects not only make history more accessible, but also allow us to see the world from Anne's perspective, adding a new dimension to our understanding of her life, death, and alleged afterlife. As we continue to explore Anne Boleyn's life and her spectral presence, it's worth noting how digital humanities and archival discoveries are reshaping our understanding of this intriguing figure. They offer us not just a window into the past, but also a mirror reflecting our own fascination with history, the supernatural, and the enduring power of a compelling story. Voiceover. The fascination with Anne Boleyn's life, death, and alleged spectral presence extends beyond the realm of historical research and ghostly tales. The story of Anne Boleyn is also being told through innovative educational initiatives aimed at fostering historical literacy and engaging the public in active learning. One such initiative is the Anne Boleyn Experience, a week-long immersive event held at Hever Castle, Anne's childhood home. Participants are given the opportunity to live and breathe the Tudor era with guided tours, expert talks, and even Tudor-style banquets. By stepping into Anne's world, they gain a deeper understanding of her life and the turbulent times in which she lived. Similarly, the Tudor Times website offers an extensive online learning resource, including interactive timelines, engaging articles, and downloadable resources, all dedicated to bringing the Tudor era to life for people of all ages. A significant aspect of these educational initiatives is their emphasis on critical thinking. They encourage participants to question established narratives, challenge traditional perceptions, and form their own understanding of Anne Boleyn and Tudor England. Documentaries like this YouTube series play a crucial role in this regard. They bring history to the masses, making complex historical narratives accessible and engaging. They not only recount the tales of the past, but also inspire viewers to delve deeper, to seek out primary sources, and to engage in the fascinating process of historical inquiry. These initiatives underscore the importance of public engagement in historical narratives. They reveal that history is not a static, unchanging entity, but a vibrant field of study that continues to evolve with each new discovery. They remind us that our understanding of figures like Anne Boleyn is shaped not just by the events of their lives, but also by our ongoing dialogue with the past. As we continue our exploration of Anne Boleyn's life, her spectral legend, and her enduring legacy, Let's remember the importance of education and public engagement in bringing history to life. To understand the ghost, we must first understand the woman. Anne Boleyn, the second wife of King Henry VIII, led a life filled with controversy and intrigue. Born into a family of nobility, Anne quickly rose to prominence at the English court. Her charm and wit caught the eye of King Henry, who was already married to Catherine of Aragon. But this did not stop the king. He was smitten by Anne's beauty and intelligence. Anne's marriage to Henry was a turning point in England's history. It led to the creation of the Church of England, 
a seismic shift that would forever change the religious landscape of the country. But their marriage was not without its share of problems. Anne was unable to provide Henry with a male heir, something that was seen as a significant failure in her role as queen. In a twist of events, Anne found herself at the center of a scandal. She was accused of adultery, incest, and high treason, charges that many historians now believe were fabricated. The accusations led to her arrest and she was subsequently tried and found guilty. On a spring morning in 1536, Anne was beheaded at the Tower of London, sealing her fate in a tragic end. But Anne's story doesn't end there. After her death, rumors began to circulate about her ghost haunting the Tower of London. Reports of her apparition, often seen near the site of her execution, have been recorded for centuries. Some say she appears carrying her severed head, while others claim she roams the halls of the tower, her ghostly figure cloaked in a dress of pure white. Her life was a whirlwind of controversy, and her death a tragic end. But could these events be the reason for her ghostly appearances? As we delve further into the mystery of Anne Boleyn's ghost, we'll explore the theories and personal testimonies that suggest her spirit may indeed still linger in the places she once roamed. Now, we delve into the theories that attempt to explain why Anne Boleyn's spirit might still roam the earth. There's a captivating mystery that surrounds the ghostly appearances of Anne Boleyn, the ill-fated second wife of King Henry VIII. Why, after nearly five centuries, does her spirit allegedly continue to haunt specific historical locales? The theories are as diverse as they are fascinating. Many believe that Boleyn's unjust execution could be a significant factor. Accused of high treason, incest, and adultery, she was beheaded in May of 1536. Yet many historians argue that these charges were fabricated, a result of political maneuvering and her failure to produce a male heir. This theory suggests that Anne's spirit may linger due to the injustice of her demise, a spectral figure still seeking vindication. Another theory posits that Anne's deep emotional attachment to certain historical sites might anchor her spirit to these locations. In particular, the Tower of London, Hever Castle, and Blickling Hall, all places with significant ties to her life, are hotspots for reported sightings of her ghost. Perhaps in death, Anne returns to the places that held meaning during her lifetime, her spirit unable to sever ties with her past. Paranormal investigators also weigh in on the debate, with some suggesting that Anne's strong personality and turbulent life might have left a residual energy imprint. This theory, known as the Stone Tape Theory, proposes that emotional or traumatic events can be psychically recorded into the environment, resulting in phenomena akin to a ghost. Historians, on the other hand, often approach these theories with a healthy dose of skepticism. Some argue that the sightings of Anne's ghost are a manifestation of the collective cultural memory, a ghostly embodiment of the fascination and sympathy that her tragic story evokes. Others propose that the sightings are a result of misinterpretation, where natural phenomena or tricks of the light are mistaken for the supernatural. After all, our minds are remarkably adept at finding patterns and making connections, even when they might not exist. There's also the psychological perspective to consider. The phenomena of pareidolia, where the mind perceives a familiar pattern where none exists, and the power of suggestion can play significant roles in ghost sightings. When individuals expect to see a ghost, particularly in a location steeped in history and tragedy, they are more likely to interpret ambiguous stimuli as a paranormal encounter. Theories abound, but the truth remains elusive. Yet the impact of Anne Boleyn's spectral presence is undeniably profound. The tale of Anne Boleyn's ghost has made its mark on more than just the annals of paranormal sightings. This haunting narrative has woven itself into the fabric of popular culture influencing literature, film, and television alike. Let's delve into how this spectral tale has left its imprint on our cultural consciousness. The story of Anne Boleyn, the ill-fated second wife of King Henry VIII, has been a captivating tale for centuries. Her dramatic life and tragic end have proven to be a rich source of inspiration for countless works of literature. From historical novels to gripping thrillers, her spectral presence lingers on the pages, serving as a potent symbol of a woman wronged, and the fickle nature of power and love. The influence of Anne's ghostly tale extends beyond the written word, seeping into the realm of film and television. The Tudor era, marked by its opulence, intrigue, and high-stakes power plays, has served as the backdrop for numerous dramas. Anne's ghost, often portrayed as a melancholic figure seeking justice or a vengeful spirit haunting her former husband, has become a recurring character. 
adding a supernatural twist to these historical narratives. Beyond entertainment, the story of Anne Boleyn's ghost has also shaped historical interpretations of her life and the Tudor era. Her spectral appearances have sparked debates among historians and paranormal enthusiasts alike, leading to re-evaluations of her character, her relationship with King Henry, and her tragic fate. These discussions have shed new light on the politics, gender dynamics, and religious conflicts of the era, underscoring the enduring relevance of Anne's story. In essence, the ghost of Anne Boleyn has transcended the realm of the supernatural to become a cultural phenomenon. Her spectral story, while chilling, has served to keep her memory alive, stimulating ongoing interest in her life, her era, and the circumstances surrounding her tragic end. From spectral sightings to cultural influences, the ghost of Anne Boleyn continues to haunt our collective consciousness. As we draw the veil back over the spectral realm, we leave you with the enduring mystery of Anne Boleyn's ghost. We've journeyed through the corridors of history, from the tumultuous life and tragic death of Anne Boleyn to the chilling accounts of her ghostly appearances. We've grappled with the theories that attempt to explain these spectral sightings, and we've delved into the impact of Anne's story on popular culture and historical interpretations. This is a mystery that continues to captivate and intrigue us. Now we invite you to share your thoughts. Do you believe in the existence of Anne Boleyn's ghost? What theories resonate with you most? Does her story change the way you view history? Remember, History is filled with mysteries waiting to be uncovered. So stay curious, stay vigilant, and don't forget to subscribe for more intriguing historical content. Until next time, fare thee well.